Now, <coughs> the first phase of TDD is starting with a failing test. The second phase is making the test pass as simply as possible without touching the test. But the third phase is also very important, refactoring. Because if we don't refactor, we're going to have disgusting code like this. Okay? And the point of refactoring is that you do it after you have tests, and then you can actually refactor. This gets rid of the idea that just because you wrote the code in a simple way, it has to be ugly. Because the refactoring makes it beautiful. What is the definition of refactoring? Change the code without changing the behavior. Yeah. This guy is good. What's your name? Mm -hmm. Mike. Mike? Mike. Mike. It's Mark. Mike, can you repeat for those who haven't heard? Uh, it's changing the code uh, in such a way that it doesn't change its behavior. So it's actually making it free. Okay. You see, Mara gets a free pizza. The rest of you have to pay. Um, I'm just kidding. You have to pay too. Just kidding. Uh, never mind. Uh, this gets worse. My joke gets worse and worse. It's time goes by. Um, that was a joke too. By the way. So, so you see. Now, where was I? <laughs> oh yeah, refactoring, refactoring. Changing the code without changing the functionality. So if you've ever taken a method and renamed it, you've done refactoring. If you have taken a large method and extracted it into multiple short methods, you've done refactoring. But it doesn't have to use a tool. You can, a lot of times we do it manually. There are tools for refactoring that make it much easier. So what I usually do with this is that I refactor things to become a bit more readable. Uh, for example, I would extract a method here that says uh, return um, whatever this means, because this is knowledge that the method here doesn't have to know about, to a method that says handle a single number. Um, and the, the, there are two basic ways that I think about refactoring. I look at a method and I say, does the method know too much about the things it's supposed to do? So if you've ever heard of the SRP, the single responsibility principle, I'm a big believer in that idea. And, and this method knows way too much. It's doing too many things. So I would uh, either have a method that does one thing well, or have a method that calls many different methods, and then that method only knows the algorithm of calling the other methods. But it doesn't know how things are approached. Uh, for example, you might end up with a method that looks like this. Um, okay? This is an example of everything passing and refactoring. This is one example of what it might look like. You, you clean the, the input. If it includes something, then return handling a single number. Otherwise, you replace the limiters. You turn it into actual numbers. You disallow the negatives. You filter the allowable numbers. And then you return the good numbers in JEC, which is summing them up. So I can read this code almost like reading a book. I need to see what it does. I, I don't need to see what it does. I just need to see. Uh, I need, sorry. I don't need to see how it's doing it. <coughs> I just need to see what it is doing. Uh, Uncle Bob has a really good way to explain it. It's like reading a magazine or a newspaper. Is that you can, you can choose at which level to read the code. You can read just the headers, or you can drill down and read just at the, at the explaining paragraph. You can drill all the way down to read all the nasty details. But you can choose when to stop to read, and still understand everything. So there are multiple ways, there are multiple levels of reading this method. And the, the easiest way is just to read what it's supposed to do. And we can drill down and read what it, whenever we want all the gory details. Um, so now that we've done this, what I want you guys to, uh, to uh, try to accomplish is to get to um, a situation where you have at least the first half of the string calculator kata working. Before that, we're going to take a short break. But before the break, I want to explain one last thing. Uh, because one of the requirements is to make sure that uh, the code throws exceptions when it's supposed to. OK? Um, now, throwing exceptions um, in test unit, uh, you would write something like this. Uh, new line, let's see. OK. Test that when you add negative numbers, you get an exception. Um, 
So what we do, we have a special method called assert raise. Now assert raise, we can declare what is the type of error that's supposed to be raised. By default, it's just a runtime error. So we just write the type of the error. And then there is this thing called do. If you come from C sharp, uh, when you see the word do, it's basically whatever is after that is a delegate all the way to the word end. So do all this selected code here is basically a nested function. Okay? So assert raise and execute whatever is inside this method and, and, and do a big try catch or just on this method that has one line of code. Okay? And you can see that do ha happens a lot. For example, uh, in Ruby, the idea of nested methods, nested functions or delegates um, is uh, very, very popular. Even in RSpec, if you're going to write tests, you start with the word describe and then the type of a class you want to describe, and then you start with do. And then you describe nested describes inside it. And then you have do as well. So this thing is a nested function without this inside this thing, which is itself, this whole thing is one big nested function. Because it's part of this. So it's a very, um, once you get to, to use it a lot, it's a very comfortable mechanism to, to, get, to get a lot of things done. But for, uh, for our purposes, we will use a search race and just write the piece of code, the line of code that's supposed to throw an exception here. And to raise an exception, we just use the word race. So here we might have a function uh, that checks handle single number. For example, it will say raise, and then the negative message. This is just a const, and then the number. If the number includes a minus. This is how you might raise an exception with the message. Um, so if you, uh, if throughout the coding you have any questions, uh, I'll, I can show you how to solve it in the code or one way to solve it. Um, and as we, uh, as things get more and more uh, difficult, I'll show uh, cool things that we can do uh, in Ruby to make things a bit more um, simple to solve. Uh, for example, we'll talk about what the hell this means as well, if you've never seen it before. Okay, questions before we go to break? No? Okay, let's take 15 minutes break, eat some more pizza, go to the toilet, and then continue. And when we come to back to the break, I want you guys to try to sit in pairs and try to solve it. Hopefully, someone who knows Ruby will sit with someone who's never done Ruby. Okay? Uh, so that you guys can work together, you get to learn how to explain things to other people, and you both get to um, exercise on doing test-driven development. It's much more fun when doing it in pair.